Hey, 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 monkeys, how are you doing? Damien Keys here. Welcome to number two in the series, How to Make Money as a Musician. So today we are talking about covers bands. Now I have funded my life off and on from covers bands since I was 19 years old. I actually left home in Swansea when I was 19. I moved to England, I moved to Guildford, which was a very expensive place. And I couldn't really afford to live there. I couldn't go and ask my mum if I could have some money. So I had to fund myself and I had to work. I didn't want to get a job job. I wanted to fund myself as a musician. And covers bands were the way that I did this. Also, the reason why I can build and run businesses now is because I built and run covers bands when I was younger. If you can build a professional commercial band, then you can definitely run a business later in life. Because if you think about it, it's got all the same principles, your marketing, your sales, dealing with people and dealing with difficult people because you're dealing with creatives and creatives are fantastic, but they're hard to manage. So if you can do that, you can definitely run a business. So come with me on a journey and let's talk about making money through commercial bands. Number one, play to your strengths. Now this is really, really important. And I see so many students at college or university who want to set up a functions band who are 18 or 19 years old. And when they do so, they put their set together and their set is just really old, farty songs that they think are gonna make money. And all of a sudden you've got 70s tracks and Mustang Sally and play that funky music and Stevie Wonder. And the reality is it's a bit weird because you've got 18 year olds playing all these songs from 40 years ago. And to me, it doesn't add up. I think it is a much better idea if you're 18 or 19 years old, you are young and therefore you have got the energy and the youth on your side to be able to play and understand music of today. And there are plenty of gigs out there for modern music. In fact, there's more gigs out there for young people playing modern music than young people playing old farty music because it doesn't add up and the old people that you think are gonna book you are not gonna book you to play that music because you're 18 year old playing Mustang Sally. Number two, use people that you need and not people that you want. Now this is a commercial outfit, so this is about making money. So just because you've got friends that wanna be a part of this, or because you wanna work with someone because they're a cool person, it doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be in this band. You need to let the market decide, and let me tell you a few things. Male-fronted covers bands sell a lot more than female-fronted covers bands. That's just the market of where we are today, and it might change in two years' time, but that's where we are right now. Also, smaller bands are more effective and get more gigs than bigger bands. And so therefore, if you turn your three piece into a four piece or into a five piece, you're making it bigger, clumsier, and more expensive, and therefore harder to book. Also, you need to bring people in with a certain look. If they aren't gonna fit in, or if they're gonna give a reason why this band won't be booked, they can't be in this project. This is not a creative project. This is about how you can put something together, run your own project, and make money so that you can go away and work on the more important stuff, which might be your originals band, or it might be you wanted to be a session player. This is just a way that you can make money through music as quick as possible. Number three, don't be cheesy. The days of wearing some weird 70s pimp suit, those things have gone. Nobody wants to book one foot in the groove for their wedding. Nowadays, the people who are getting married are gonna be between the age of 24 and 32, 33. That's the bulk of people booking bands for their first wedding. And therefore, most of these people were at college like five years ago. So they didn't grow up in a time where they were listening to funk music. They're probably into the same music as you and I, and that's what they wanna hear. They wanna hear cool music. And when the band turns up, they want it to be real. If they could afford it, they'd go and get the Stereophonics or the Killers or Drake. They just can't afford it. So you have to do that for them. You have to fulfill that role. Your job is to, to give them the nostalgia and the tracks of their youth and, and make this a party without it being cheesy. Number four, take this seriously, because I can assure you one thing, the client who books you will be taking it seriously. And if it's a bride, this is the most important day of her life, and she absolutely will be taking this seriously. And back in the day, what used to happen, which was a really odd time, was someone would book a band, and then musicians would kind of turn up, that the band leader would say, yeah, I know a bass player, and I know a drummer, and I know a guitarist, and we'd all turn up, and we'd all go, 
what songs do we know? And we just bash something out. It was, a, it was a total con, it was a total rip off. Nowadays, people want an actual band. So when you are there, you take this seriously. You don't turn up not really knowing songs or I haven't really got a shirt or this is serious. This is a very, very important day in someone's life. And if you get onto the corporate circuit, you know, same thing again, everything is meticulous. This is not about you just turning up and having a go. So take this seriously. Number five, let's talk marketing, your pictures and your videos. Now, most bands when they start will need to have pictures and videos, but I don't think they realize how much marketing that you now need to cut through the noise. It is no longer acceptable to have a picture or the same four pictures, but basically from a different angle of one photo shoot. It's just not enough. You've got to show that this band is the real thing. So when you have your photo shoot, it's got to look like a real band. You need to have a couple of videos and your videos need to be of different things. Your videos need to be performance videos. They need to show off some personality. They need to actually show off some gigs that you've done done for social proofing. Your marketing now is marketing a business. And if you're gonna be charging a thousand pound a night and you wanna get 50 to 100 gigs a year, that's a business that could potentially bring in a hundred grand a year. So you have gotta take that seriously. So the videos, they need to be the real thing. The pictures, they need to be the real thing. And I'm not talking about get together and do an iPhone shoot because that is Originals Bands. That's what Originals Bands do all the time. This is about marketing a business. So don't cut corners. Make sure you get a great photo shoot. In fact, make sure you get three great photo shoots and you wear different clothes in each one. Every time you go and do a gig, make sure you're there to do another photo shoot. When it comes to videos, you are just getting as many as you can. If you're on a gig, you're videoing the gig so that you can edit it together and you can get it on your Facebook, you can give it to agents, you can put it on your YouTube. The marketing now is at a much higher level than it's ever been if you wanna cut through. And if you're a new band, doesn't matter. You've still gotta have absolutely fantastic marketing. Number six, your demos. Which songs that you're gonna record? So you're gonna to need to start with at least five tracks to show off the range of the band. Now let me tell you something. When you are looking for a band, whether it's for a wedding or corporate, some of these people will go through 40, 50, 100 bands looking for the right band. If you put demos of Sex on Fire or Uptown Funk or somebody else's guy, they will wanna puke and punch you in the face because they hear it again and again and again. And they've already been to 10 weddings last year and a band played Sex on Fire. That's the last thing they want to listen to is Sex on Fire. So pick something which is gonna show you off, that's got a bit of nostalgia, that's got a bit of fun, that's got lots of high energy, that shows off the band. But please don't play Mr. Brightside, Sex on Fire or Uptown Funk as a demo. Leave that to on the night. Now when it's on the night, very, very different because when you play Mr. Brightside on the night, it will go down well. So there is this kind of slight difference between what you do on the night and what you're marketing because when everyone's drunk and they go and play Sweet Child of Mine, it's a great idea. But when they're in the house and they're going through everyone's profile, that's the last thing they want to hear is Sweet Child of Mine. So you've got to be cleverer with the demos that you choose. And one thing that really helps is songs that are current and modern now because that's what people are listening to on the radio. So pick tracks which are current and modern you know, have the odd old one thrown in to show that if they book you, then you are versatile and you can play a mix of different ages, but you've got to be clever with your demos. So don't pick the most obvious tracks and think it's original because that's what everyone else does. You've got to revert away from that. Number seven, your gear. Now your gear not only has to all work, but it has to be a professional level which works for different genres. Because think about it, you're a covers band. So therefore you're going to play different styles. You might be playing funk at the beginning of the night, but you might, you might be playing Rage Against the Machine or Metallica by the end of the night. You might be playing rock, you might be playing some pop, and therefore you have to be able to be versatile with the sounds. Therefore, if you turn up with a Marshall stack and some Jackson pointy spiky guitar, the sound and look is not gonna work for funk. So therefore, your gear needs to work. Now also, when it comes to things like PAs, you really need a PA. Hiring PAs is a nightmare, it's a pain in the ass. So if you're gonna do this professionally and you're gonna take it serious, you're gonna need a PA. Now when you buy a PA, all you need to start with, depending on the size of the band, is two tops, I would go active tops, 
and a desk. Now, I'm not gonna go into makes and models because everyone will just, all the geeks will come out and tell me I'm wrong. What we use here are Yamahas. We have two Yamaha tops, they're 300 a side, I think, and an active desk. It's small, compact, easy to push out sound. Some of our bands have a sub as well so we can put the bass drum through it. And that gives enough volume vocally and with a couple of instruments, maybe guitar and bass drum, to cut through to a few hundred people, which let's face it, for a wedding or a corporate gig is most of them. So that's all you need. You don't need to go to a massive, big, industrial scale venue size PA, but at the same point, it's gotta be bigger than one of those karaoke machines. So take your gear seriously. Again, you can make a lot of money from covers, but if you're gonna do that, you have gotta take this seriously. This is someone's big day that we're talking about, and the gear also needs to reflect that. Number eight, how much should you charge? Ooh, this is an awkward one, but let me give you a few bits of advice that might help you when you put the costings together. Now, don't forget, when you think about how much you're gonna put as a fee on your band, the agency, if you're using an agency, will also add 20, 25%. On top of that, you'll probably have your travel and maybe even accommodation that goes on it. You may even, if you live in the, in the UK and you're growing to do a certain amount of gigs, you may even fall outside of the VAT threshold and therefore have to add 20% VAT. So these costs go up. So think very, very carefully. But as a rule of thumb, I can tell you that the bulk of people wanting to get married in the UK are looking roughly to spend a thousand pounds. That's the rough budget for when people are getting married. They will budget 1,000 pounds for their wedding band. Now, if they find the wedding band that they love, they might spend 12 or 1,300 pounds, but they're not going to jump from 1,000 to 3,000. Can you undercut them? Yeah, of course you can, but be very careful because if you're dealing with a corporate client or a wedding, if you take it down too far, they're gonna think something's wrong. If they see that the, that the average nationally for wedding bands is a thousand pounds and you're charging 400 pounds, they're probably gonna think you're really rubbish and that's gonna worry them. Same thing with the corporate market. Can you double your price? Absolutely. There are bands that go out for four or 5,000 pounds for a gig. However, they will deliver four or 5,000 pounds worth of value. It's not just, they don't just stick a fork in, in, a, in a price and say, that's what it is. It's just five grand. That's what we want. They will make sure that band delivers five grand because I can guarantee you if they don't, the agency will be on the phone very, very quickly. So your price point is very, very important. And if you're young and this is your first band, then do your costs. Figure out how much each musician wants to earn. And if you're, if you're taking a cut because you're putting the whole thing together for, for the PA or the, for everything else, then figure out what you want to earn. Once you've got that, then approach an agency or the website and put it out at that price. And then over a period of time, once you get the gigs, then you can relook at the price. But if you're not getting gigs at that point, you need to have a look at your price point and your marketing. Number nine. Good. Number nine, the classic over-delivering. The best way that you can get gigs is from gigs. You wouldn't believe how many business cards I would give away on every single gig. If you give me one gig, I'm pretty sure within a space of 12 months, I'm pretty sure I'd have 50 booked in just from that one gig. Because one gig becomes a second gig, which becomes four gigs, which becomes eight gigs, which becomes 12 gigs, and it grows and grows very quickly. But the reason is, is because people need to see you and they need to think this band is beyond anything I've seen before. And if you're gonna do that, you have to over deliver on everything. The way it looks, the way it sounds, what songs you're prepared to do, how long you'll play. Everything has to be better than everyone else. And if you do that, if you really do over deliver, for example, the classic thing is two one hour sets. That's what bands do. You pay us, we'll do two one hour sets. That's the rule. Why is that a rule? Because someone made that up. Someone made that up a few years back and said, that's the rule, two one hour sets. And all bands say, we do two one hour sets. So why can't you do two one and a half hour sets? Why can't you do that? Why can't you just over deliver? Or why can't you say, well, it's two one hours, but we just throw in half an hour for free because we like it. Why can't you do that? Why can't you say, we're gonna learn a song specifically for you every single gig? Why can't you over deliver to that level? 
And when you've got 100, 150 gigs a year, it becomes difficult, but by that point, you're home dry because the amount of gigs that you're gonna get from those gigs, which will keep you going and going and going as long as you wanna make this work. Number 10, capitalizing from the gigs. So yes, it's true, gigs do come from gigs, but on the night, you need to capitalize. So for example, is the band name on the bass drum? Do you have any banners down the side saying who the band are? And when the drunk guy comes up at the end of the night and says, you're really good, do you have a business card? You say, absolutely, ka here we are, here's our card. Because you better believe the next day when he goes, that band was so cool, it was so awesome, they are gonna have no idea what you were called and they'll never find you in a million years and the moment will have gone. Whereas if they just go, oh, I've got this business card, oh wow, this is the band you are much more likely to get a gig. So you need to capitalize. So the branding and the marketing on the gig is just as important. And that also goes for your social media. If you are on a gig, you should be taking a picture of the gig. You should be taking a picture with a kid or with a bride or with a client or just the, of the crowd. These are the things that make a difference of capitalizing, allowing you to get more gigs from gigs. It's classic social proofing. So that's my tips on how you can make money in a covers band. If you've got any questions, leave comments below. Trust me, this is an area and a field I really, really do understand. But if you want any help, give me a shout. Otherwise, like and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.